in radio and telecommunications a dipole antenna or doublet is the simplest and most widely used class of antenna. It consists of two identical conductive elements such as metal wires or rods, which are usually bilaterally symmetrical. The driving current from the transmitter is applied, or for receiving antennas the output signal to the receiver is taken, between the two halves of the antenna. Each side of the feed line to the transmitter or receiver is connected to one of the conductors. This contrasts with a monopole antenna, which consists of a single rod or conductor with one side of the feed line connected to it, and the other side connected to some type of ground. A common example of a dipole is the rabbit ears television antenna found on broadcast television sets. The most common form of dipole is two straight rods or wires oriented end to end on the same axis with the feed line connected to the two adjacent ends. This is the simplest type of antenna from a theoretical point of view. Dipoles are resonant antennas, meaning that the elements serve as resonators, withstanding waves of radio current flowing back and forth between their ends. So the length of the dipole elements is determined by the wavelength of the radio waves used. The most common form is the half-wave dipole in which each of the two rod elements is approximately one quarter wavelength long, so the whole antenna is a half wavelength long. The radiation pattern of the dipole is omnidirectional. It radiates equal power in all azimuthal directions perpendicular to the axis of the antenna. For a half wave dipole the radiation is maximum, 5.12 dB perpendicular to the antenna axis, falling monotonically with elevation angle to zero on the axis off the end of the antenna. Several different variations of the dipole are also used, such as the folded dipole, short dipole, cage dipole, bow tie, and batwing antenna. Dipoles may be used as standalone antennas themselves, but they are also employed as feed antennas in many more complex antenna types, such as the Yagi antenna, parabolic antenna, reflective array, turnstile antenna, log periodic antenna, and phased array. The dipole was the earliest type of antenna. It was invented by German physicist Heinrich Hertz around 1886 in his pioneering investigations of radio waves. Elementary doublet. From a theoretical point of view, the dipole antenna is the simplest type of antenna. An elementary doublet or Hertz and dipole is a length of conductor IA that is small compared to the wavelength I carrying an alternating current. Here I per mil equals A2 I euro F is the angular frequency, and I equals a SHA 1 is the imaginary unit, so that I is a phasor. It is used in, for example, analytical calculation on more complex antenna geometries. Note that this dipole cannot be physically constructed because the current needs somewhere to come from and somewhere to go to. In reality, this small length of conductor will be just one of the multiple segments into which a real antenna is divided, in order to calculate its properties. In the case of the elementary doublet it is possible to find exact, closed form expressions for its electric field, E, and its magnetic field, H. In spherical coordinates, they are. Where R is the distance from the doublet to the point where the fields are evaluated, chi equals A2 I euro per I is the wave number, and za equals a a she one quarter i micron chi equals a i one quarter c is the wave impedance of the surrounding medium. The energy associated with the term of the near field flows alternately out of and back into the antenna. The exponent of e accounts for the phase dependence of the electric field on time and the distance from the dipole. Often one is interested in the antenna's radiation pattern only in the far field, when ra per mil i slash two i euro. In this regime, only the one per Rankine term contributes, and hence, the far electric field, A, of the electromagnetic wave is coplanar with the conductor and perpendicular with the line joining the dipole to the point where the field is evaluated. If the dipole were placed in the center of a sphere with the axis south-north, the electric field would be parallel to geographic meridians and the magnetic field of the electromagnetic wave would be parallel to geographic parallels. Radiation resistance and aperture, all antennas have a radiation resistance, which is the resistance the antenna presents to its circuit due to radiation. The radiation resistance of the elementary doublet in free space is 
where ZO is the impedance of free space. This is precisely four times the radiation resistance of the real short dipole with a linearly tapered current distribution. The radiation resistance is typically a fraction of an ohm, making the elementary doublet an inefficient radiator. The directivity of the elementary doublet a euro that is, the theoretical antenna gain assuming no ohmic loss is a euro is 1.5, which corresponds to 1.76 dB. The actual gain will be much less due to the ohmic losses and the loss inherent in connecting a transmission line to the antenna, which is very hard to do efficiently because of the low radiation resistance. The maximum effective aperture of the elementary doublet is where γ equals a 1.5 is the antenna gain. A surprising result is that even though the elementary doublet is minute, its effective aperture is comparable to antennas many times its size. A real small antenna will have a smaller effective aperture because of its lower gain. Dipole characteristics, frequency versus length, dipoles that are much smaller than the wavelength of the signal are called Hertzian, short, or infinitesimal dipoles. These have a very low radiation resistance and a high capacitive reactance, making them inefficient antennas. Despite this inefficiency, they can be practical receiving antennas for long wavelengths. Dipoles whose length is half the wavelength of the signal are called half-wave dipoles, and are more efficient. In general radio engineering, the term dipole usually means a center-fed half-wave dipole. A half-wave dipole is cut to length L for frequency f in hertz according to the formula. Where id is the wavelength on the dipole elements, i0 is the free space wavelength, c is the speed of light in free space, and k is an adjustment factor. The adjustment factor compensates for propagation speed being somewhat less than the speed of light. The dipole elements will have distributed inductance and capacitance. The value of K is typically 0.95. For thin wires, K is approximately 0.981. For thick wires, K drops to about 0.915. The above formula is often shortened to the length in meters equals 143 fmhz or the length in feet equals 468 fmhz. fmhz is the frequency in megahertz. Radiation pattern and gain. Dipoles have a radiation pattern, shaped like a toroid symmetrical about the axis of the dipole. The radiation is maximum at right angles to the dipole, dropping off to zero on the antenna's axis. The theoretical maximum gain of a Hertzian dipole is 10 log 1.5 or 1.76 dB. The maximum theoretical gain of a half-wave bipole is 10 log 1.64 or 2.15 dB. Feeding a dipole antenna, a folded dipole has a central impedance of about 300 ohms. Therefore, the simplest way of feeding a folded dipole antenna is using a 300 ohm ladder line. Ideally, a half-wave dipole should be fed with a balanced line matching the theoretical 73 ohm impedance of the antenna. A folded dipole uses a 300 ohm balanced feeder line. Many people have had success in feeding a dipole directly with a coaxial cable feed rather than a ladder line. However, coax is not symmetrical and thus not a balanced feeder. It is unbalanced because the outer shield is connected to earth potential at the other end. When a balanced antenna such as a dipole is fed with an unbalanced feeder, common mode currents can cause the coax line to radiate in addition to the antenna itself, and the radiation pattern may be asymmetrically distorted. This can be remedied with the use of a balloon. Feeding a dipole with balloons. A dipole is a symmetrical antenna, as it is composed of two symmetrical ungrounded elements. Therefore, it works best when fed by a balanced transmission line, such as a ladder line, because in that case the symmetry matches and therefore the power transfer is extremal. When a dipole with an unbalanced feed line such as coaxial cable is used for transmitting, the shield side of the cable, in addition to the antenna, radiates. This can induce radio frequency currents into other electronic equipment near the radiating feed line, causing RF interference. Furthermore, the antenna is not as efficient as it could be because it is radiating closer to the ground and its radiation pattern may be asymmetrically distorted. At higher frequencies, 
where the length of the dipole becomes significantly shorter than the diameter of the feeder cable, this becomes a more significant problem. To prevent this, dipoles fed by coaxial cables have a balloon between the cable and the antenna, to convert the unbalanced signal provided by the coax to a balanced symmetrical signal for the antenna. Several types of balloon are commonly used to feed a dipole antenna, current balloons and coax balloons. Balloons can be made using ferrite toroid cores or even from the coax feed line itself. The choice of the toroid core is crucial. A rule of thumb is, the more power, the bigger the core. Current balloon, a current balloon consists of two windings that are closely coupled. Coax balloon, a coax balloon is a cost-effective method of eliminating feeder radiation, but is limited to a narrow set of operating frequencies. One easy way to make a balloon is to use a length of coaxial cable equal to half a wavelength. The inner core of the cable is linked at each end to one of the balanced connections for a feeder or dipole. One of these terminals should be connected to the inner core of the coaxial feeder. All three braids should be connected together. This then forms a 4-1 balloon, which works correctly at only a narrow band of frequencies. Sleeve balloon, at VHF frequencies, a sleeve balloon can also be built to remove feeder radiation. Another narrow band design is to use AI slash 4 length of metal pipe. The coaxial cable is placed inside the pipe. At one end the braid is wired to the pipe while at the other end no connection is made to the pipe. The balanced end of this balloon is at the end where the pipe is wired to the braid. The I-4 conductor acts as a transformer, converting the infinite impedance at the unconnected end into a zero impedance at the end connected to the braid. Hence any current entering the balloon through the connection, which goes to the braid at the end with the connection to the pipe, will flow into the pipe. This balloon design is impractical for low frequencies because of the long length of pipe that will be needed. Dipole types, short dipole. A short dipole is a physically feasible dipole formed by two conductors with a total length L very small compared with the wavelength I. The two elements are fed at the center of the dipole. The current profile in each element, actually the tail end of a sinusoidal standing wave, is approximately a triangular distribution declining linearly from a maximum at the center feed point to zero at the ends. At any instant the direction of the current is the same in both the dipole branches, to the right in both or to the left in both. The far field I of the electromagnetic wave radiated by this dipole is. Field strength is maximal in the plane perpendicular to the dipole axis, declining monotonically to zero on the antenna's axis. The three-dimensional radiation pattern of a vertical dipole is torus-shaped, with equal radiation in all horizontal directions. Knowing the radiated electric field, we can compute the total emitted power and then compute the resistive part of the series impedance of this dipole due to the radiated field, known as the radiation resistance. Where is the impedance of free space? Using a common approximation of ohms, we get antenna gain, antenna gain, g, is the ratio of surface power radiated by the antenna to the surface power radiated by a hypothetical isotropic antenna. The surface power carried by an electromagnetic wave is. While the surface power radiated by an isotropic antenna feed with the same power is. Combining these expressions with a far field expression for a for a short dipole gives. Where dB means decibels gain relative to an isotropic antenna. Half-wave dipole. Typically a dipole antenna is formed by two quarter wavelength conductors or elements placed back to back for a total length of La equals AI slash 2. A standing wave on an element of length approximately I slash 2 yields the greatest voltage differential, as one end of the element is at a node while the other is at an antinode of the wave. The larger the differential voltage, the greater the current between the elements. The current distribution is assumed to be approximately sinusoidal along the length of the dipole, with a node at each end and an antinode in the center. Where K equals A2 I euro per I, and Z runs from a La euro slash 2 to La euro slash 2. In the far field, this produces a radiation pattern whose electric field is given by. Where again Z equals AA she 1 quarter slash I micron. 
the trigonometric factor cos i euro shiny euro i is approximately equal to the factor shiny euro i appearing in the far field radiation pattern for the elementary doublet, so the radiation pattern of a half wave antenna is a slightly flattened torus. This time it is not possible to compute analytically the total power emitted by the antenna, though a simple numerical integration or series expansion leads to the more precise, actual value of the half wave resistance. This leads to the gain of a dipole antenna. The resistance, however, is not enough to characterize the dipole impedance, as there is also an imaginary part of euro it is better to measure the impedance. In the image below, the real and imaginary parts of a dipole's input impedance are drawn for lengths going from to and with respect to diameter, accompanied by a chart comparing the gains of dipole antennas of other lengths, both as a number and in dB. Ideal half-wave length dipole, this type of antenna is a special case where each wire is exactly one quarter of the wavelength, for a total of a half wavelength. The radiation resistance is about 73 ohms if wire diameter is ignored, making it easily matched to a coaxial transmission line. The directivity is a constant 1.64, or 2.15 a decibel. Actual gain will be slightly lower due to ohmic losses. If the dipole is not driven at the center, then the feed point resistance will be higher. If the feed point is distance x from one end of a half wave dipole, the resistance will be described by the following equation. If taken to the extreme, then the feed point resistance of AI slash 2 long rod is infinite, but it is possible to use AI slash 2 pole as an aerial. The right way to drive it is to connect it to one terminal of a parallel LC resonance circuit. The other side of the circuit must be connected to the braid of a coaxial cable lead and the core of the coaxial cable can be connected part way up the coil from the RF ground side. An alternative means of feeding this system is to use a second coil that is magnetically coupled to the coil attached to the aerial. Quarter Wave Monopole The quarter wave monopole antenna is a single element antenna fed at one end, that behaves as a dipole antenna. It is formed by a conductor in length fed in the lower end, which is near a conductive surface which works as a reflector and is an example of a Marconi antenna. The current in the reflected image has the same direction and phase as the current in the real antenna. The quarter wave conductor and its image together form a half-wave dipole that radiates only in the upper half of space. In this upper side of space, the emitted field has the same amplitude of the field radiated by a half-wave dipole fed with the same current. Therefore, the total emitted power is half the emitted power of a half-wave dipole fed with the same current. As the current is the same, the radiation resistance will be half of the series impedance of a half-wave dipole. As the reactive part is also divided by 2, the impedance of a quarter-wave antenna is ohms. Since the fields above ground are the same as for the dipole, but only half the power is applied, the gain is twice that of a half-wave dipole, that is, 5.14 dB. The earth can be used as ground plane, but it is a poor conductor. The reflected antenna image is only clear at glancing angles. At these glancing angles, electromagnetic fields and radiation patterns are the same as for a half-wave dipole. Naturally, the impedance of the earth is far inferior to that of a good conductor ground plane. This can be improved by laying a copper mesh. When the ground is not available other metallic surfaces can serve as a ground plane. Alternatively, radial wires placed at the base of the antenna can simulate a ground plane. For VHF bands, the radiating and ground plane elements can be constructed from rigid rods or tubes. Folded Dipole A folded dipole is a half-wave dipole with an additional wire connecting its two ends. If the additional wire has the same diameter and cross-section as the dipole, two nearly identical radiating currents are generated. The resulting far-field emission pattern is nearly identical to the one for the single wire dipole described above, but at resonance its feed point impedance is four times the radiation resistance of a single wire dipole. This is because for a fixed amount of power, the total radiating current is equal to twice the current in each wire and thus equal to twice the current at the feed point. Equating the average radiated power to the average power delivered at the feed point, we may write. It follows that. 
the folded dipole is therefore well matched to 300 ohm balanced transmission lines. The folded dipole has a wider bandwidth than a single dipole. They can be used for transforming the value of input impedance of the dipole over a broad range of step-up ratios by changing the thicknesses of the wire conductors for the fed and folded sides. Half-wave folded dipoles are often used for FM radio antennas. Versions made with twin lead which can be hung on an inside wall often come with FM tuners. The T2FD antenna is a folded dipole. They are also widely used as driven elements for rooftop Yagi television antennas. Other dipole antenna types, there are numerous notable variations of dipole antennas, the bow tie antenna is a dipole with flaring, triangular shaped arms. The shape gives it a much wider bandwidth than an ordinary dipole. It is widely used in UHF television antennas. The G5RV antenna is a dipole antenna with a symmetric feeder line, which also serves as a 1-1 impedance transformer allowing the transceiver to see the impedance of the antenna. The doublet antenna is a dipole antenna with a resonant symmetric feeder line. The sloper antenna is a slanted dipole antenna used for long-range communications or in limited space. The AS2259 antenna is an inverted V dipole antenna used for NVIS communications. General impedance formulas the complex radiation impedance of a dipole antenna is the sum of the real resistance Rho dipole and the imaginary reactance X dipole. In practice numerical solutions are required to get useful results but several attempts to solve the problem analytically has been done. Induced EMF method, assuming sinusoidal current distribution, the induced EMF method gives a rough estimate of reactance X and radiation resistance of for a dipole of length L and radius A operating at a frequency with wave number K in a medium with impedance Z. Where psi and C are the cosine and sine integral functions and I cubed is the Euler constant. The induced EMF method is inaccurate for dipoles longer than a half wavelength and verticals longer than quarter wavelength. Halle copyright NS integral solution and similar give more successful results. Dipole is a reference standard, antenna gain is sometimes measured as decibels relative to a dipole, which means that the antenna in question is being compared to a dipole, and has a certain amount of gain relative to a dipole antenna tuned to the same operating frequency. In this case, one says the antenna has a gain of xdbd. More often, Gains are expressed relative to an isotropic radiator, which is an imaginary antenna that radiates equally in all directions. In this case one uses dB instead of dBD. As it is impossible to build an isotropic radiator, gain measurements expressed relative to a dipole are more practical when a reference dipole aerial is used for experimental measurements. 0 dBD is often considered equal to 2.15 dB. From Bionet's principle, a dipole antenna is complementary to a slot antenna consisting of a slot the same size and shape as a dipole cut from an infinite sheet of metal. Both give the same radiation pattern. Common applications, set-top TV antenna, the most common dipole antenna is the type used with televisions, often colloquially referred to as rabbit ears or bunny ears. While in most applications the dipole elements are arranged along the same line, Rabbit ears are adjustable in length and angle, allowing for the user to adjust for nearby obstacles to gain better reception. Larger dipoles are sometimes hung in a V-shape with the center near the radio equipment on the ground or the ends on the ground with the center supported. Shorter dipoles can be hung vertically. Some have extra elements to get better reception such as loops, which can be turned around a vertical axis, or a dial which modifies the electrical properties of the antenna at each dial position. Shortwave antenna, horizontal wire dipole antennas are popular for use on the HF shortwave bands, both for transmitting and shortwave listening. They are usually constructed of two lengths of wire joined by a strain insulator in the center at which a ladder line or coaxial feed line is attached, with the ends supported by buildings, towers, or trees. These are simple to put up for temporary or field use. For transmitting antennas, it is essential that the ends of the antenna be attached to supports through strain insulators with a sufficiently high flashover voltage, since the antenna's high voltage antinodes occur there. Dipoles versus whip antennas 
dipoles are generally more efficient than whip antennas. The total radiated power and the radiation resistance are twice that of a quarter-wave monopole. Thus, if a whip antenna were used with an infinite perfectly conducting ground plane, then it would be as efficient in half space as a dipole in free space an infinite distance from any conductive surfaces such as the Earth's surface. However, in real-life situations, if considering the antenna height, a monopole may have an advantage at certain radiating angles, especially at low heights. Dipole towers, although the mast radiator antenna towers for MF and LFAM radio stations are usually constructed as monopoles, some are dipoles. The metal structure of the mast is divided in half, and is driven in the center. Large half-wave dipole towers include the Warsaw Radio Master Euro the only half-wave dipole for long wave ever built. Collinear dipole arrays, vertical dipoles can be stacked end-to-end -to, -end to make collinear antenna arrays, to give a higher gain than a single dipole. The radiation pattern of the array is omnidirectional like a dipole but the toroidal-shaped pattern is flat and so more of the power is radiated in horizontal directions and less is radiated up into the sky and down toward the ground and wasted. Collinear arrays are a higher gain alternative to whip antennas for fixed base station antennas for mobile two-way radios, such as police, fire, or taxi dispatchers. See also, electronic symbol, isotropic antenna, omnidirectional antenna, whip antenna, driven element, balloon, coaxial antenna, amateur radio, shortwave listening, T-aerial, AM broadcasting, FM broadcasting, references. Elementary, short and half-wave dipoles. External links, dipole antenna tutorial M talk, broadband dipoles antenna-theory.com, AC6V's homebrew antennas links, your first HF dipole. Simple yet complete tutorial from AM.net